Your Buffalo Bills secure the AFC East, taking down the Miami Dolphins 21 to 14 this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Uh, we're a show here on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. Brought to you by 26 Shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. The Bills have dug their way all the way out of this hole that they put themselves in. Uh, finished off the season. Not only taking down a division rival, but taking over the two seed. Winning the division. Knocking Miami down. Uh, securing home games in the playoffs. Just in all around awesome end to the season and you know of course the way the bills did it it was nice and stress-free uh they 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 just cruised to victory you know no stress about it at all uh jokes aside a very stressful game um it was a really weird one because despite you know the final score and it coming down to a one possession game that was a game where it felt like that game felt like it was never in doubt to me more than some of the bigger wins that we've had, uh, if that makes sense. The big thing in this game was early in the game, just terrible miscues that just, you know, took took all the, not even took the wind out of the sails because we came back and did it again and got all the way down the field and did it again. Um, obviously early in the game, um, Josh Allen has the first pick. Um, looked to be a miscommunication between him and Gabe Davis. Um, what I'm really interested in, in in this particular play is the very obvious pass interference that didn't get called the play before. Um, Dawson Knox gets, you know, straight up like bear hugged before the ball gets there. Um, and, you know, it it's... It's never fun, you know, playing the result and like the the what could have happened game. Uh, but based on the amount of times that the Bills were willing to do, you know, their version of the tush push, the snow plow, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'd like to think first and goal from the one ends up being a very different result um, than having thrown the interception. Um, but, you know, that that was the first of the miscues. Um, from Josh Allen, who was immensely frustrating, but also um, just heroic and put up ridiculous numbers. And, you know, part of it is he, he has to have this prolific game uh, to bail them out because of mistakes early in the game. Um, but he's also able to do it. So, um, roller coaster ride. And, and I'll say this about Allen. Um, I've been I've been saying for quite some time. Um he's got shades of Brett Favre to me where he's believes he can make every single throw. Um and that's gonna come with some turnovers, it's gonna come with some variance. I'm perfectly okay with that because of how much he can do to, you know, put the offense on his back, whether it's with his arms, with his legs. Um that being said, three in a game is a lot. Uh, you're not usually overcoming that. Um, in particular, in particular, the the timing of them and the area of the field. You know, go all the way down the field. You're about to get at least a field goal, and you know, no points go on the board. Um, so that was the the first frustration of the game. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I I was taking notes like a madman during this game. Uh, I'm so excited about the way this season ended. I'm I'm a little bit all over the place tonight, uh, but I have a bunch of things I want to talk about. Um, the second thing that frustrated me with Allen um, was the missed shot to Diggs. And this to me has been, it's, it's been happening too much. It's become a trend. And we talk about, you know, some of the, these down games Diggs has had, um, for what it's worth, there's been a few of those shots that look to be available that they're just not clicking on. And there's at least, you know, at least two in the last three weeks. 
And all of a sudden, if he puts up one of those, we're not having any digs conversations. You can look at the box score. You can see the stats. You know, very obviously that, you know, he had a monster game. Um, but, you know, still still a good game out of Diggs. It was, you know, the kind of game that I was hoping to see from him. Um, back on track, seven catches on eight targets for 87 yards. Like, cool. That's that's the Diggs I wanted to see going into the playoffs. Um, it was it was great to see it in this game. Um, but to me, a touch concerning um just that they're still missing on those shot plays um because they're there right um the second interception i've seen a ton of um you know this coming out is like the the defense of the arm punt whatever um this play was on fourth and two so a as the play breaks down like yeah i'm i'm fine with trying to force a throw worst case scenario gets picked off it's probably probably better than the punt um, whatever, uh, kudos to Miami for trying to take it out, uh, and work out too great for them. Um, but this one, as the play started developing, it, it looked like Kincaid was pretty wide open for, you know, just getting the first down. And this looked like one of, one of the plays where, um, Josh Allen decides he's going big game hunting. Um, and to me, that's, that's the, that's the type of turnover like yeah when push comes to shove um sure i can accept that as an arm pun it's not the worst turnover in the world um but i also feel like the a situation like that is what in the in the future leads to not having the trust to to go for it in fourth downs and spots right you know the the play was drawn up by brady it was open for the first down and we went for more. Um, and, and to me, that's the type of situation where if we're not making the smart play, if we end up with a negative result that should have been a very positive result, uh, deep, you know, deep into the opponent's territory, that that's going to be the type of thing that gets the coach to be a bit more conservative in those situations. Um, so overall, I think Allen had a pretty, pretty good day, you know, taking the profits um but on a play like that 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 has to be the play that's made that had to go to Kincaid um and then the I believe it was the following drive um the fumble by Allen right in the pocket again deep into Miami territory and this one was just Torrance getting absolutely blown up and th this is the type of play where I need Josh Allen to just just accept it get down um i mean this isn't like he got hit from the blind side this is right in his face and he ends up fumbling this ball and it's a super costly turnover um so th this is that fumble is actually the the turnover that i have i take the most issue with um because it's just it's that let's live to see another play and you know as we watch the rest of the game we we see what happens when you know decisions like that are made and we play for the next play when things don't work out and it's you know a ridiculously talented offense um so those are the ones that i don't want to see um so just looking at some of the miscues in this game uh we had james cook drop a touchdown right in the end zone um Ty Johnson before the half gets down to the one yard line. And the clock runs out. I've also seen uh, a ton of a ton of hate on Allen for this one for not throwing it into the end zone. Um, look, I get it that you know as as time's about to be expiring, it's got it's supposed to go to the end zone. You know, so it's either a touchdown or an incompletion, whatever. Um, I have a hard time jumping on board with that criticism. I, I get it. Like that's, that's the smart football play, whatever. Um, but Ty Johnson's able to get that ball like one foot further and nobody's talking about, you know, Oh, we got lucky that Josh Allen made the wrong play and it worked out. It's, Oh, what a brilliant play to, you know, find him and let him scoot into the end zone right before half. I, I get it. Right. 
you want to either you know have the touchdown or the incompletion um again to me that's just a little bit too much playing the result and we're having a whole different conversation um if, if he if he hits on that um so i mean right there we're talking three turnovers that were in scoring position um we had like i said the cook drop and the ty johnson um getting stopped at the one we're talking five possessions right there and i'm not even saying you know these are all touchdowns right I, i'll i'll put it to even like if they're all field goals um you're talking about 36 14 um <clears throat> going back to the the one that i talked about with the Knox interference on the play before i like to think that the bills are getting that in and this is where like when i say i feel like the bills really dominated this game way more than the scoreboard's going to show there was so much left on the field and like that's that's great to be able to play like that and still be able to come away with the win um i feel like this has kind of been the the mantra of this season and like games that we won it's like hey you know there's some great tape to clean up and you were able to do it in a win like this is the best version of that like you were able to do it to secure the division, to secure the two seed. Like, awesome. That Buffalo Bills team could have damn probably dropped a 50 burger on Miami last night if we didn't keep blasting ourselves in the foot. Um, we've gotten away with a ton of that this year. It's also cost us a ton this year. And I guess this would be my biggest thing headed into the playoffs um concern wise is is it going to be is this going to show up in the playoffs and be the one that we can bounce back from or is it the one um that we're not able to overcome and who knows i would love to see you know just a clean game on both sides of the ball and if we have the defense playing like they were last night with the offense taking care of the ball, moving it like that, maybe taking a couple less chances. There's not a team in the league that wants to play that Bills team in the playoffs. It's all a matter of putting it together. And in this game, we even got contributions from special teams. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about all the other contributors. Um, but there's been lots of special teams issues this season. Um, you get special teams chipping in with Deontay Hardy with it just a phenomenal punt return. Um, longest punt return in Bill's history, I believe it was. Um, so just an absolutely electric play. But as I'm sitting there, you know, enjoying that part of the game, we're still sitting in a situation in this game where it came down to some like two minutes left in the game and Miami's got the ball in their hands with a chance to tie it up. And for how dominating this defense played for how much the offense was moving the ball at will, this, this should have been a game where, you know, first half you damn near feel like you could go to bed by the end of it. And maybe you watch the third quarter and you're pretty comfortable coasting um, for that. For that game to have to come down to the last possession um it's fun right but it also gives me some concerns going forward uh, i'm gonna take a quick break when i come back i just want to talk about a few other things from that game and what lies ahead for the bills stick around hey this is dick de Groot, bill's dad now back to the show Welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Uh, if you made it this far, just do me a favor. Really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, tell somebody about the show. Uh, really helps us, you know, to keep this show coming out every week. Uh, and hey, don't miss any episodes as we take this ride to the Bills winning their first ever Super Bowl, right? You don't want to miss the show when we're talking about that. Anyways, you want to jump back in um, the second part of the show here. I want to talk about some of the the concerns going forward for this team and kind of what lies ahead. And before the game, I was 
I was joking with one of my buddies. You know, everything was obviously based on the, the previous games. You know, we knew that the Jaguars had lost. The Bills had secured a playoff spot. Um, this game against Miami was just for seeding for the division. Um, and I was like half joking with a buddy like, hey, man, we we made it um, like we, we dug our way out of this hole that we've put ourselves in. We have no business being in the playoffs this year um, for how the season started. It's awesome that we're there. We're getting healthy at the right time. This team can get hot. Maybe we just don't roll the dice on anything and and we rest some people and then, you know, turn up in the playoffs. Um, obviously, love the result of winning the division, but we do come away with, from this game with some pretty key injuries and still waiting to hear more on, on these injuries right now. But um, Razul Douglas goes down. Terrell Dodson goes down. Um, Gabe Davis left the game with a knee injury. Um, so I, I've seen some updates, but nothing really concrete. I saw um, Razul Douglas had said that he could go back into the game if need be and had a talk with Dane Jackson on the sideline. And Dane Jackson said, yo, man, if you're not, if you're not 100 right now, I got you. I promise you. Um, and he did. Um and Gabe Davis, I saw, looks like the injuries injury was believed to be minor. Um, so we'll we'll see what else comes out of that. Um, but just want to talk about I touched on Dane Jackson there. Um, want to talk about the players that stepped up in this game, and it's not just the backups. Um, it's it's some players that have gotten some good snaps this year, and we haven't seen a ton of production from. Um, so obviously just talked about Dane Jackson coming in for Razul Douglas, um, down the stretch has a huge pass breakup, you know, it's, it's one of those plays that Dane Jackson's kind of like always in position with the ball. He doesn't always make the play. Um, this is, you know, going deep in deep into your cornerback depth here and this is still a guy that ha has played a ton of starts in this defense. So kudos to Brandon Bean for getting Dane Jackson to stick around. Um, obviously, I want to see Razul Douglas out there um, playing with Christian Benford. They've been playing great together. Um, but it's nice knowing that you have some meaningful depth there. Um, we see um, Bale Inspector come in when uh, Terrell Dodson went out and you know, I, I saw him come into the game and I was like, oh, there's our liability. Like, let's see what happens. And for what it's worth, I thought Spectre played pretty well. And he wasn't just, you know, out there. He was getting in on tackles. He was in the backfield. You know, he made some plays. And I, he's one of the guys that in the beginning of the season, when we, none of us, I won't speak for everybody. When I was unsure about Terrell Bernard, a lot of people were unsure about Terrell Bernard. Um, Spectre was getting some snaps and it looked like, you know, there was, there was some, you know, movement for him getting playing time. Um, it's not ideal, but I, I was pretty impressed from what I saw him on the first watch. Um, and then we're talking all these other players that stepped up in this game. Um, Sherfield and Hardy. These have been two of the rougher Brandon Bean signings in particular on the offensive side of the ball. They picked a hell of a time to have a great game to impact the game. Um, Sherfield with that ridiculous toe tap touchdown. Hardy, obviously, we talked about um, that punt return for a touchdown really seemed to energize the team. Um, and then getting into even um, Taylor Rapp somebody that I been very critical of this season making the game ceiling interception um just whole bunch of dudes that I didn't expect to to be the ones that really decided this game um I thought it was going to be more like you know this Josh Allen box score of 30 for 38 uh 359 yards passing two touchdowns adding 67 yards rushing on the ground 
I thought that was going to be the script to win this game, right? I wasn't expecting Rep to finish it up with an interception. Um, just kudos to these guys that, you know, have been around and, and haven't really made giant impacts this year, but stepping up when the lights were really the brightest. Um, so super encouraged to see that. Really hoping that we find out more about these injuries and they're not something that we have to be super concerned about. Um, and because I, I, I got done watching this game last night and I, I was psyched about it, celebrating for about five minutes. And then I was like, Razul Douglas, like, <laughs> what do we got here? Because you ain't, you ain't making a trade for the next Razul Douglas uh, post week 18. Um, I think I, I maintain that was probably the best move in the Brandon Bean era, um, let alone being, you know, a, a deadline acquisition. Um, to be able to replace, you know, Trey Love, uh, Trey White level play, maybe even exceed that in season. Um, but you're not replacing that twice. Uh, if he's missing any time, you got a combination of Benford, Dane Jackson, and probably going to see some Kyrie Elam. <laughs> so, um, for what it's worth, I maintain that Kyrie Elam looked great down the stretch last year i don't know what's been going on this year there's the injury not sure about that it seemed like you know convenient injury to free up some roster space not sure um but if douglas misses any time here there's a good chance that we we see Kyrie elam out there so hopefully in in his stint of being inactive and you know kind of being on the sidelines he's been able to you know take that time reset do what he needs to do to to be the player that a lot of us thought he was going to be um and then as far as gabe davis if he's missing any time i don't know do we see do we finally see justin shorter come up um it's kind of crazy to think about that as you know somebody that could be making a, a significant impact coming in, in the first game being in the playoffs um, I know there's a ton of criticism for Gabe Davis out there. Um, much of it justified. I think he does bring something to the offense in the way of blocking and just the amount of snaps that he's out there in general that you're replacing um, with people that haven't had a ton of reps with Josh Allen. Um, if Gabe Davis is missing times, like I said, maybe it's shorter. Maybe it's Isabella. Maybe you're getting more snaps from Sherfield Hardy. Um, none of those options are super encouraging to me. Um, like I said, Sherfield and Hardy picked a hell of a time to have a great game. The rest of the sample size of the season is what I'm more confident they're going to bring to the table. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but there's just a much bigger sampler sample size of that. And even at this, you know, these are kind of flashes in the pan. Um, I will say as far as if you have to replace Gabe Davis for any time, Khalil Shakir has been balling out this season, um, as well as Kincaid, um, just two young players that they have like these flashes and these big games. And it's like, okay, is, is this the coming out party? Are we going to start seeing this every week? And Kincaid, I think has been pretty consistent throughout the season of getting targets and catches and maybe not, you know, Travis Kelsey numbers, bunch of touchdowns, all crazy stats like that. But I feel like he's been pretty consistent and Shakir kind of just flew in here and all of a sudden, you know, just has these incredible games of just super efficient play. And it, he's got that burst. He had to play up the sideline and he catches everything that goes to him he catches i it, i'm i think the most i've seen for him for incompletions in a game was like one in this game six for six 105 yards um averaging 17 and a half yards per catch like that's awesome numbers and it actually kind of reminds me of when gabe davis was kind of like our fourth option had to be the afterthought for defenses 
it's hard to get a ton of coverage guys to be able to cover everywhere and it's it's why i loved gabe davis in that like wide receiver three four whatever you wanted to call it there's a slack guy that was always hurting you um a legit outside number two i'm not gonna sit here and you know start the start the train for let gabe davis walk and make shakir wide receiver two i i think that was the <laughs> the mess that we got ourselves in here in the first place um but for shakir to be putting up these numbers and maybe be a third option right now behind Diggs and Kincaid and add to that room in the off season. Um, right now I've, I've loved what I've been seeing from him and, um, similar to, I talked about Elam down the stretch last year. Um, I think Shakir started flashing towards the tail end of last season. Um, and he's a player. I was super excited that the bills drafted, um, and then it, it kind of seemed like he was coming along slow again this season. And um, through this last six games or so, he's he's really started impacting games and super fun player to watch. And he's making plays every time the ball's in his hands. Um, so feel good about what we have there um, going forward. Um, up next, the Bills have one of those one o'clock games on Sunday, which super psyched for. I don't know about you guys. The primetime games are fun and everything. Um, but by the time we get through the game and all the highs and lows of how we got to that game, I, I'm not falling asleep after that. I, I was up till, I don't, I don't know, three in the morning. Um, so I will take Sunday at one o'clock gladly. Um, showdown with the Steelers obviously we're going to be playing in Buffalo um Steelers are a team that I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be here sleeping on the Steelers I'm not gonna say you know this is a team that the Bills should dismantle all week I have immense respect for that team and the coach to be able to make the playoffs with what was going on with that team this year um just also like the bills fired an offensive coordinator that didn't seem to have the same spark as it did for the bills um you have your first round quarterback get hurt and now he's losing his job you had your backup trubisky he wasn't getting it done you're on mason rudolph now a guy that you've had plenty of looks at and he never became the dude for you um and they're winning games um i think a ton of this has to really speaks to like the the type of coach Tomlin is you know there's so much talked about about you know oh he's never had a losing record and I saw a lot of <clears throat> a lot of talk about you know whatever he goes nine and eight and yeah he had a winning record but they missed the playoffs so like how cool is it that he always has a winning record um I feel like the team they had this year had At no point in the season did I think this looked like a playoff team, um, but they continued to find ways to win. I believe through like week 13, they had like a negative point differential, um, which is crazy to end up in the playoffs with that. But Tomlin got them there. Um, so they, this is the type of team that has scrapped and really fought for every win that they've had this season. Um, and they're not going to stop doing that just because the bills are coming in hot. Um, we'll see what happens there. Um, it does look like TJ Watts probably going to miss this game. Um, look, I, I think the Steelers have some playmakers on this team. Uh, I, I have my concerns for Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. Um, we struggle stopping the run at times and those two dudes are vicious runners and they get it done on the ground um tj watt um yeah tj watt is one of those guys that just can absolutely ruin your game by himself um that you know like his brother jj um aaron donald those types of players them being in the game completely changes uh, 
the landscape of the game and, and not saying that it it automatically gives them win anything like that um just a huge loss for pittsburgh if he's not able to go and it, it, as much as you know it may benefit the bills you never like seeing a player go down um especially they work this hard all season to make it to the playoffs and then they're not able to go um it is what it is uh i think that's definitely a huge loss for them that that adds to the advantage for the bills if he's not able to go um so we'll see that's coming up um stay tuned we're gonna hopefully get some updates on the injuries for some of the bills players here as we start moving towards uh this playoff game and hopefully you know just the first step to the run to the super bowl so uh like i said super fun way for this season to end you know at sitting at week 12 we we're at six and six and this team ends up 11 and seven and taking that division title once again and they've had me back and forth all year um they've made me balding they've made me gray they've taken years off my life um this has been a stressful team to watch especially with the expectations going into this season um, the ex expectations that have been floating around for years now. Um, it wasn't a sexy season all year. It didn't feel great all year. Um, but all the all the cliches exist for a reason, you know. Uh, take some luck, take some health, and you want to get hot at the right time. Um, and I feel like we, we're getting hot at the right time. We're getting healthy at the right time. Um, so hopefully that little bit of luck, the couple bounces go our way um for for as rocky as this season has been i've talked myself back into it and i feel i feel like i feel is is good about this team if not better than any of these teams we've seen under josh allen and part of it to me is the afc is all over the place right um miami's supposed to be this cream of the crop beating them twice um this game and the scoreboard is a lot closer than i think it actually was um chiefs i'm i'm never sleeping on andy reed mahomes travis kelsey um the success that they've had if their postseason looks anything like the regular season they're they're vulnerable they're they're not the same you know score at will team that we've seen in the past um I've been saying they looked vulnerable for a couple of years now, maybe three years. Um, this year feels different. You're seeing them lose games that you don't typically see, dropping games to teams like the Raiders. Um, I think the biggest concern for me on the AFC side is it's got to be the Ravens, right? Um, Lamar, Lamar Jackson's having a great season. Um, they're balanced. They have actually have receivers now. They have a run game. They have a good defense. Um, Baltimore is supposed to be the team that scares me the most. And I just look at the, the, the plans that we've had in the past going against um, Lamar Jackson, quarterbacks like him. Uh, for, the, for the most part, we really held players like that in check. And it's not just quarterbacks, it's running backs, whatever. McDermott's been very good at taking away the most effective player and, and limiting them. Um, we've seen it. We've seen it historically when he plays against Tyreek Hill. Um, I mean, to a certain extent, you saw it last night. I mean, we've seen games where Hill's going for 150, 200 yards, um, held them to seven catches on 13 targets for 82 yards. That, it's not the worst thing to happen. Um, like I said, the, the, the Ravens are probably the toughest team left out there in the AFC and the plan that I think McDermott can cook up to limit Lamar Jackson and make him a one dimensional quarterback. I, I feel good about my chances with that. Um, I also got to throw in there Cleveland. Um, I have thought for like seven weeks that Cleveland was done. The wheels are going to come off at some point. It's over. They're on their fourth quarterback. I made fun of them when they brought Joe Flacco in from his couch. 
Um, Joe Flacco is absolutely balling. Um, I put them up there just because they have had this never say die season. And every time I think they're done, every time I think they're going to lose a game, they, they end up pulling it off. Um, so I believe they have to play the Ravens. So one of those teams will take each other out um, before that's a question for us. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this is this is the time for the Bills to put it all together. And if they're able to do that, this is the most open the AFC has been since the Bills have gotten Josh Allen. Um, so it's all about from here. Take care of your business. Win, just keep winning and handle your business. This is, for what it's worth of my opinion, this is your year. Go out there and get it done. Um, and that starts one step at a time coming up against Pittsburgh. That's going to wrap it up tonight. Thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Uh, like I said, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hopefully we're talking to you next week about our win against the Steelers. And until then, as always, go Bills. Go Bills.